Neil and welcome to RGB Guru. Today we're going to be having a look at transforming one model here into another model here. Okay, and we're using 3D Element to do that along with creating the models originally in Cinema 4D. So what I'm going to do is just take you through actually how we create these models in Cinema 4D and how we make them sort of break apart there. We're using this plugin here called Thryas. Um, I think I'm pronouncing that correctly. Um, I've downloaded the version 13. Um, it's a freebie, um, but this guy has lots of sort of donationware as well. That's really sort of quite cool and handy if you're into your Cinema 4D. Um, okay, so first off, we'll actually write, create some Mo text. We can actually obviously do this with any object, but I just thought I'd make it nice and simple. Um, and we're going to choose a bit of text there. We're going to center align it. Okay, I'm going to choose a font I like. Um, let's have a look. I'm going to use titanium. Okay, and it's simple as we select the plugin. It's got this little dialog window. We're going to crank that up so we've got a decent amount of pieces. You can obviously extend this. I've got it set to random. I'm just going to break that apart, and it just basically smashes that into several pieces and turns it into a fracture ob object. It will also create two separate materials, which is quite useful in um, Element 3D. The reason being is obviously you can have an external texture and an internal texture. Now the file I've set up in, in um, After Effects, um, you could be able to download and all you've got to do is obviously change the models if you want to and the animation is ready to render. Um, one thing to be wary of is that if you're saving your Cinema 4D file, it will actually save everything you've got in here. So we have to actually delete delete the ones that we don't want so I'm going to delete that one there okay and then we'll just file and save it in the correct place and this will be in your documents folder um, so you've got to go documents this is exactly the same PC or Mac documents and video copilot and you'll have all your presets and bits and pieces in there if we go into models and we go to my models I've set it up so that it actually takes from your A and B model so you'll be going from A to B so if I save it in A, save that there, replace. Now we flick over to uh, After Effects here. You'll see that it should replace it with an A. There we go. It's as simple as that. Okay. So if you want to actually edit that again, just once again save a different one to B, and you've got from A to B. Okay, next stage we'll be looking at actually how to put this together in After Effects. Hello and welcome to the second part of this tutorial. Um, I'm going to take you've got a basic understanding of After Effects and a basic understanding of how Element 3D works. Um, so what we've done here is actually to guide you through each layer and actually how I've set this file up. You can download this file at the bottom of the blog. First off, we're going to look at actually how we've actually put each model into the, the different groups. Okay, so first off, we've applied um, Element 3D to this first layer. Um, basically, it's just creating a solid layer and adding the plugin to that layer. And then what we get, if we go into the scene setup here, we get the option to add the models to the different groups. So what I've got here is group 1 which is the RGB text and I've assigned a material to the internal texture and the external texture that we've got set up um, you'll have to take this as a given because we can't actually see it at this point because we haven't split the model apart and same for the second one okay simple as chips um, as you can see one is assigned to group 1 one is assigned to group 2 so we're going to be merging from group 1 which is the RGB to, and then to group 2 or group B we've got here A and B which is group 2 okay hope that makes sense so we've got group 1 and group 2 and it's merging from group 1 to group 2 okay and basically it's the setting that we use to merge from one model to the other so if I just drop down element here and I'll just show the keyframes I've dropped in just so that you fully understand what's happening um, I'll just bring that down a little bit more 
so you can see it so we basically we're using the option to the multi object option so that's enabled the here um, it's a tick box actually in the plugins here so if we go into group one um, and we go into multiple objects and make sure that that's enabled and that basically lets me us um, separate the model into its its parts so where we split it in Cinema 4D it separates it into those little parts so the more parts we actually add the more it will scatter so first we'll look at the displacement and we've got the X, Y and Z displacements and what we've done is we've started those at zero add keyframes by clicking the stopwatch and then we scan across to this point here where we have separated it into several different elements and what I'm going to do is actually just reduce these a little bit because it's a little bit sprayed so if I go and enter one for each of these you can see that it's starting to bring the material the object back in a little bit um, we may add a bit more to the Z so it comes out at us a little bit more maybe a bit more than that okay and as you can see we log it onto the keyframe here so basically all we've got is group one that basically goes from no displacement to some displacement at this point and you can see it's breaking apart it's as simple as that and we've also at this point where we sort of transform in from one group to the next added a bit of rotation so there's no rotation at this point and then we go to a, like a full 90 rotation there so that's setting some keyframes there at zero once again setting those um, and we've repeated this basically for the second group but we've done it in reverse so we're going from a point where we've got a sort of like full rotation, um, sort of ninety percent rotation, down to a zero rotation. So then they set back, and then the displacement is going from what we've got here, which is obviously a one rotation. Let's maybe add a bit more to the Z like we did with the other one. Um, that'll do, and then we set that back then down to zero at this point where it's near enough coming fully back together okay like so and then once again the rotation happens in the same way there so it's basically up with a displacement on the one group and we've got set rotation there that goes from 0 to 90 and then uh, 90 to 0 so we're flicking them back as they turn and we've got the same displacement here going from a full one or whatever settings you require down to zero um, and to enable that animation to go from one to the other we basically in the animation engine we make sure that's enabled once again it's a tick box inside the settings here so where's animation engine it's here somewhere I'll take my word from it yeah, it's there it is animation engine I'll we'll make sure that's enabled and we're going from group one to group two um, you've got a few other options that you could actually mess about with the animation here so you could randomize it a little bit if you wanted to give you a different effect play these through see how they look but basically we've got as you can see keyframes here and I've used it easy in easy out so it's a bit smoother so we've got an easy in there um, but it's going from the animation is going from 0 to a hundred percent there and that that's that's those keyframes all you need it's so obviously going from merging from group 1 which is the RGB or the A model to B which is the Guru the B model and we're just merging from one to the other and we're actually as we do it editing the keyframes and the displacement and the rotation of that section as we do that um, and it's as simple as that you just basically merges those two together so that's the first sort of element set up next we'll be looking at the cameras okay we're now on stage three where I'm basically going to take you through um, how the camera and the lighting set up so I'll just close the 3d element element okay the camera's straightforward all I've got is a, a basic pan from left to right and I've set key paint frames at positions I think are quite cool but this is something again you can play with um, I have also added a sort of freeze frame section here where I've created a keyframe here and basically brought that across so that we actually don't have any movement when the transformation is taking place. So I have within the 
Smashbox layer got obviously those keyframes where the rotation takes place. I've keyed those in to match up with the camera movement and it's as simple as that. So the camera movement goes across. I've also uh, added depth of field so that we've got that foggy sort of look at the start and as it comes in it gets sharper and you can obviously see a, a bit of depth of field either side just to make it look like that a little bit cooler I think and then obviously it blurs off towards the end as simple as it goes okay we've got a bit of a random more random sort of look to it because I edited the settings there but it's, it's looking good okay the next bit I want to bring you to is a really handy lighting setup but we're just going to have a look at that in the next section okay in this last part I'm just going to guide you through the other little tweaks and tips that I've actually created just to make that look final um, as you can see what I've done um, is I've got here uh, a little toolkit of an image based lighting um, toolkit that I've downloaded from Millennium's um, stuff website um, he's been cool with me letting me distribute this with the tutorial well worth having a look he's got some other cool bits and pieces on his site so please do check him out I'll also put his link on the bottom of the blog as well and what it is it's basically uh, a lighting dome if you guys have ever used them in cinema 4d which is basically a spread of lights that surround the object so if we just look in the in the folder here it's actually got some controls is set up that let you add elements of light the size of the dome etc and I've just set it up so that we've got here um, the dome's quite big radius and it's got seven lights in total and what it does is it basically takes the colour information for each light from a separate comp here um, which I've just set up as black and white but you've got so many different options here of setting these up and he's also put some wicked sort of presets in and if we go ahead and I'll just change this um, just to, so you guys can see how it actually affects the model so if we now flick back we can just see that once again we've got a different look completely um, and I'd obviously set mine to black and white but it's looking quite cool there isn't it um, maybe a little bit more work needed on the colours but you can sort of see how I've set that up um, I'll see if I can just drop back there to black and white there we go really handy little kit um, and obviously you've got the option within um, cinema um, sorry within element to actually use an image based um, reflection type thing but I've sort of really toned that down and added some basic lighting that gives me a little bit more control and it also means obviously you can get a different look really quite quickly so that's what I've used there uh, well worth checking out and I think it'd be quite handy with just general uh, After Effects fun uh, general After Effects fun don't know what that is um, so that's worth looking at um, it's got a solid background with a bit of a, a ramp on it that the ramp sort of comes to the centre there uh, and finally I've added a little bit of music this is from Audio Jungle and which is just obviously a bit of a fade in fade out um, that adds a bit more to the animation I'll put the link on for this this will not be included in the template or in the file basic so I've bought it um, but you guys can buy it too if you need it and as I said I'll put a link at the bottom of the page and I've also got a little blip here I'll just close that down uh, that adds the noise to the sort of rotation section just highlighting that just to make it sound a bit, bit cooler um, I always believe that adding uh, sound effects and a bit of sound to an animation really does add a bit of attraction and a bit more sort of life to it so that's something to if you do the anim the uh, animation you think oh, it's not quite as good as what RGB Guru has done I think sometimes it does relate to the music you use and so if you guys do replicate it and add your own music please let us know and then finally I've just created a little RGB split and a bit of levels just to tweak with the colour a little bit and give it a little bit of this sort of like split around the edges and all I've done is used a shift channel with a tint on it and then I've used an optical uh, compensation just to spin it out a little bit more um, and all you do is obviously edit that and as you can see if I bring that in you'll see that it changes a little bit there um, yeah it's great fun um, it's probably better if you leave one without it 
um, but if you want them all spilling out you can also just obviously copy one into the other just copy and paste those in and it gives you a, like a quite a crazy sort of like optical effect there um, but a chromatic elaboration they call it um, so I'm really quite liking that sort of final tweak to it um, if you ever go and uh, create an animation using this template please uh, put it up um, obviously you can affect the colors it's yours to do what you wish with um, as you can see I've just pulled that uh, these layers that's that comp there so those are linked um, but yeah that's great stuff uh, any questions anything you need to know just give us a drop us a line uh, this will be available on the website so have fun